Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children, 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, JC, John Coleman. Dio, what's popping? Dude, I am loving that hoodie. Episode 400, congratulations. This is episode 400? Yes. Oh, man, and we're still on the OG office studio it is hey how's the build out coming of the new studio it's empty and has a lot of echoey but you know once i clear all the spit cups it'll be good (laughs) all the spit cups yeah we are uh we're taking over an office that is currently being used by a um tobacco user connoisseur a connoisseur of chewing tobacco so yeah john's a little bit disgusted when he walks in there and he's like what are all these spit cups i'm like don't worry about it it's florida (laughs) yeah it happens yeah, you don't know about this stuff coming yeah. from Massachusetts. No, we used to, I would put in dip, some skull. Yeah. When you did papers, yeah, I got a little buzz. Wait, you did it with papers? No, no, when I had to like write a paper. Oh, something. when you had to yeah, write you a paper. Do a skull, pop an Adderall, bang that out. Oh, you did that at University of Tampa? No, I did that in high school. In high school? Mm-hmm. Oh, you were advanced, huh? I'm not proud you of You must have been taking those advanced classes. No, no. It was going pre- to that no, advanced school. No, no, no. All right. Well, hey, that. kids, we don't condone that behavior. I do. You ever take Adderall? Never. Really? Yo, Never. you would go, that's shit. You would go Rain Man. If, I'm going to get you some. <laughs> I'm <laughs> serious. I want to get you some Adderall or Vivans. You would go, you would be so laser focused. They would be, wow, you've never, no. I think that's the secret. You should. That's the secret. Shout All out right. Adderall. Shout out. <laughs> Sponsoring episode <laughs> yeah, 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 400 yeah, yeah. of T-Lob. Brought to you by Pfizer. The makers of uh, yeah, Adderall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Pfizer who makes it? I don't it? know. One of the two. All right. Well, very good. No, we are building out a new studio. So this is episode 400. We are still in our original studio, so this is one of the last episodes that we'll probably end up recording in here. One of. That is really, really cool. I think, you know what, the first episode, we're going to have Mike McAllister. Mm -hmm. So Mike McAllister, Empower LO. Mike's flying in from Vegas to, to have dinner with us and then to be on the show. That's he's flying here for us. Like yes. he doesn't have a wow. Yes. Okay. I mean, it's no Chris Johnstone who flew in from <laughs> Canada. Canada. Right. But nonetheless, hey, he's gonna fly in. And I believe, based on his flight, based on our schedule, and when you told me you'd have the studio built by, I think he's actually gonna be the very first nice. official there guest in the new studio. Nice. Um, no, this is exciting. So when y'all when, when this drops. Two days away from the Tulsa event. Our yeah. first event of 2024. We currently have nine events on the calendar. Tulsa is it. We are already well over 100 registrations. And I just found out the Oklahoma Mortgage Bankers Association jumped on board. Ooh. They're like, wait a minute. We want to be a part of this. So they're coming in as one of the sponsors. So shout yeah. out to Oklahoma Mortgage Bankers Association. Nice. Which once they get it out to their member list, I don't see why we won't have 200 registrations mm-hmm. to this free event at Cabin Boys Brewery. January 11th is the date. So if you're listening to this after January 11th, sorry, you missed it. Mm. But keep on checking back. We may be at a town near you. If you want us at a town near you, it's pretty simple. Grab some sponsors, pick a venue, reach out to my team. Nikki over at TLOP is probably a great person for you to reach out to. And uh, we can start discussing what that would look like. Um, Here we are, January 2024. TLOP Online is in full swing, literally full swing. You and Mark have the e-learning platform. You're going to be launching that next month. I had another faculty call this week. All five faculty members are dialed in for all of 2024. So for our members of TLOP Online, you are going to receive 84 plus live sales training calls in 2024, plus access to the entire library of training videos, which you and I are adding five to 10 Mm. new training videos per month plus the two dozen downloadable, printable LO resources. Like all of that is coming at you just by joining the community. So that's pretty awesome. And we will continue to do for those that are tiptoeing or as our boy Rocky over at MLO Study Buddy calls them, silent creepers. For the silent creepers who love the newsletter, love listening to the show, but you haven't quite yet pulled the trigger to become a part of the community. You haven't quite pulled the trigger to invest in your future self. No worries. We will continue to do one TLOP exclusive per month. And that's going to be the first one is January 19th with, she was a previous guest, Dr. Christy McMullen. So I can't wait to have Dr. McMullen on because she's going to teach us how to sell and present better so that when we're selling, when we're presenting, we actually leave with our intended 
our, our, our intended result, which was to build a relationship that's going to generate leads, mm -hmm. right? That's the purpose of sales, to have meaningful, purposeful presentations, sales calls. She's going to teach us the best practices to make sure we're not wasting our time. So that's January 19th. You can mark your calendar or you can just go over to tloponline.com. Scroll down towards the bottom. You'll see it on um, the what's happening, upcoming events, and you can register there. That is free. That is open. Um, unlike all of our faculty calls, which are exclusively reserved for our members. By the way, we should probably quit calling the things with Dr. Christie. And like we did one with Mike Smalley. We did one with Kai McBride. Mm -hmm. We did one with Jeff Zempfer. And we called them exclusives. But is it really exclusive when it's open to everybody? What should we call them in instead of exclusive, do you think? I like exclusive because it makes it feel exclusive. Okay. Well, it is exclusive. If you yeah, listen to the show, it's, it's for you. If yeah. you follow us on social, it's for you. If you yeah. get our newsletter, it's for you. Mm -hmm. So, okay, it is exclusive. Yeah. I don't think right. yeah, that's fine. But it's not as like, it's not premier. Ooh. Premier is the faculty course because that's, you have to be part of the community. There You're a paying is. member. Mm -hmm. So it's exclusive, just not premier. All right. Well I'll, said. I'll follow I'm you on that you one. you talked your way out of it. Yeah. Hey, how about the centerpiece? You want to talk about it? You want to ask about it? Not really, but since you forced me to, it looks like the bottle of tequila that I drink. It does look you like know, that nice that, bottle of tequila. That shit called? I forgot. It tastes like ass, by the way. Well, don't say that. I hate that tequila. Do okay. you know what I'm talking about? Yes. It's the one that looks like a salt shaker. It tastes like vanilla. It's trash. It costs like $300. Okay, well. But quit, sorry, but no. Quit buying it and quit drinking hey, hey, it, John. I, I saw that. Oh, what if I <laughs> told, What if that broke when I. Oh, my. It was once broken. I know, I could it see it. It was once broken. So this is really cool. A piggy bank? I purchased this. If you're tuned in on YouTube, it's a um, windmill. It is a ceramic windmill that I purchased. It was probably 1999. I was a junior in college, and I was doing a study abroad program in England. Mm. And um, some of my classmates and I had taken a trip over to Amsterdam. So we were in Holland. We did, like, Amsterdam, and we also did Belgium. Went to Brussels, Antwerp, and, uh, and Amsterdam, like, over, like, a long weekend. And uh, you might not know this, John, because you think Amsterdam, you think red light district, you think weed. Oh, that's it. That's all that's there. Okay. Well, you have the Anne Frank House. You okay. have Van Gogh Museum. Heard of him. Um, cheese, canals, bicycles, and windmills. Okay. So uh, tulips, by the way, and mm. tulips. So I was there, and um, there's a time in my life when I was like feeling like I had to buy um, trinkets, gifts for people, <laughs> souvenirs. Yeah. It's always crazy. As a kid, my parents would go on vacation, leave me with my grandparents, come back, and they'd bring me like a pocket knife. Hey, son, I got you a pocket knife from Mexico. I thought that counts. Yeah, you know what? I don't. That was your vacation, not my vacation. I don't need you to buy me a souvenir. Like, right. rub it in that you went somewhere that you didn't invite me to. Souvenirs are what ends up in the garage and eventually ends up in a cardboard box or on that table in the yard sale. Or that table on a <laughs> on podcast, podcast yeah. that you can watch on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but this has sentimental value. I forgot that I purchased this. I purchased this in 1999 and I gave it to my grandmother, my mom's mom. And my grandmother kept it. She kept it. She used it. It broke. They glued it back together. That's why the windmill doesn't quite work mm -hmm. exactly the way that it should. It's designed to where you can put a tea light in there. So the tea light, it'll light it up. And the heat was supposed to move the windmill. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. So my parents have sold their condo. They're moving to a 55 plus community. And during that, they're doing some cleaning out. And lo and behold, my grandmother has, has, has been passed away or passed on or dead for, gosh, maybe five or seven years now. And my mom has still had this. And when I saw my parents over Christmas, she's like, hey, do you want this? I'm like, oh, my gosh, I would love to have that. Full circle. Dustin. Yes, I would love to have it because um, it reminds me of an awesome time in my life. It reminds me of my grandmother, who was the matriarch of our family. Mm -hmm. um, and it means something that, you know, it was kept all this time, mm -hmm. even though maybe I spent less than $10 on it and I forgot that I even bought it. So that's how, that's how it we're going to throw it up there. Plus, do you can you name me one book, a classic book? Come on. A classic book, maybe even a movie. Casablanca. Where, where windmills were a big theme. Maybe Don Quixote? No, I didn't watch that or read it. You were supposed to in English too. I'm mean, not in Spanish two class. All right. Well, anyhow, D. I'm trying to think. That's a good question. Yeah, it's chapter eight of the book, um, and Don Quixote. Wow. Yeah, so chapter you have Don Quixote and and I think Sancho Panza is his. Um, it's either his horse or that? His, Zorro or some shit, right? And, and he wants to fight the windmills. Yeah, but what he later learns is is windmills a a metaphor for 
for all people and, and not to fight all people, but to respect people for who they are mm -hmm. and love them for what they are. That's deep. It's really deep. So anyhow, uh, shout out to my mom for keeping this. Shout out to my granny for keeping this. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my friends who I'm still friends with. Rob, Rob, my buddy Rob. Rob uh, was with me on that trip when I purchased this tea light windmill from Amsterdam and gave it to my grandmother. But anyhow, oh. I thought it was really cool. That's why it's here. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. That's Nonetheless. That's a nice dovetail into this episode. <laughs> it doesn't dovetail one bit, John, but hey, I like to talk. I like to get warmed up, kind of, you know, grease yeah, the yeah. wheels yeah. a little it bit. It matches your shirt. It matches my shirt. It matches my glasses. It matches my eyeballs. And it matches your underwear. Yeah, you bent over some mental. No, I do. I got boxers no, sliding now. I got uh, Rick and Morty Christmas boxers on. All right. Who's Rick and Morty? Are you serious? I have no idea. Cartoon, I think. Jesus Christ. Are they a cartoon? I apologize for all the viewers and listeners that had to hear Dustin say, what is Rick and Morty? Is it what or who? Is it like, is it like a brand? Like oh. Dooney and Burke? Jesus Christ. Calvin Klein? Or is it a cartoon? It's it's a, an adult cartoon. Anime. Is it's it not, anime? No, it's not anime. <laughs> it's MAGA. Do you even know what that is? Make America Great Again? Oh my MAGA? God. No, it's Japanese anime. Wow. I need You need to catch up, man. Hey, I, I do my best. Oh, my God. I do my best. Hey, you won't let me get on TikTok. I, I, if you let me get on TikTok, no, I'll get called up. No, this is great. This you is know what I just learned? I just learned, and I don't think I just learned it, but I was, it was reinforced. My wife and daughter talking last night. Um, girl math. Have you seen anything that talks about girl no. math? So, where, where are you at? Sleeping underneath the rock? No, no. So I'll tell you the truth. Uh, my It's not a resolution. I haven't been on social media since the new year, and I don't plan on ever opening the app again. That's deep. I can make it five. I made it five days. I can make it five more. A month will turn into two months. Three months, I believe. So that's I don't. How it works, John. I don't know any that trends. Is, that's how habit formation on Instagram. Creates. Okay. Well, I think this goes back to more than just like five days ago. But nonetheless, yeah, there's a whole entire train about girl math. What is that? Like, like, it's... <laughs> like oh, well, it was um, it was buy one, get one free. So I basically, um, see, I, I'm going I'm to butcher it. People are going right. to laugh at me. Right. Uh, it's it's a way that, like, you, you could say, well, I had to buy this because it was 50% off. Like, oh, did, did oh, you need re... another purse? No, but it was I had to because I was saving money. Correct. Yeah, I saved money by buying this. Mm, I do that to myself. So that's yep. John math, too. Okay. Or, or girl math, they say, would be... Uh, you return an item that you bought at the store, and you're like, "Oh, I earned twenty five dollars today." Like no, you didn't like, earn you know, twenty five dollars. You you, you, yeah, you no, I felt the same. Back. No, I felt the same way. I returned something to Publix. I was like, "Hell yeah, I got a thirty dollars gift card." Yeah. That's like my ideology. So yeah, I'm, I do girl math all day. There we go. All right. Um, <laughs> how do you get on that because subject? Because I'm gonna have to transition. I'm gonna have to trans. And by the way, I need someone on our team on social media. Oh, we got the intern starting. We got the intern starting, so welcome. Ready? Go ahead. No, we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll let her do her intro. Okay. Yeah. I don't. Is she starting? When? I don't know. This news. To me. Yeah, Jacqueline. Shout yeah. out, Jackie. No, yeah, I think it's Jacqueline. I know. She, don't call me Jackie. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Jacqueline or Odell Becky if you're on TikTok. But okay. Nonetheless, yeah, we're gonna bring her on as a uh, social media intern. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we we eventually need a social media manager. Mm -hmm. She's a senior at UCF. She's studying marketing. She has a uh, an interest in in social media, creating reels and video content and and developing a following. I figured we need help with our social media, with that. our content creation. The universe. Yeah, you won't even log in. And Mark I, says it just it's a bane of his existence. So I'm going to go find someone who actually gets excited about this, uh, who wants to grow our following, who wants yeah. to create better content. And we're going to lean into it. Yeah, we should. And it's going to be a 22-year-old college intern. That's who should be senior, doing it. Senior Dustin, marketing student. I'm about student. to be 40 years old. Do you think I need to be logging into Instagram and liking shit? Come on, man. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> and you need to make sure our TikToks are blowing up. But your... I can't get you to do that, nor will you let me get on TikTok, you which don't... is why you don't know girl math. Uh, there it is. And full circle again. But I do know girl math. You do. Yeah, you yeah. call it John math. You yeah. call that every day. All right. Do you know anything, John, about yeah. lead conversion? I do. Hey, timestamp that right now, Mark. Timestamp that. Where are we yeah, at? I don't know. Okay, wherever we are, the episode starts now. Yeah, but some people. Yeah, love so that I had name. this conversation with um, Brian Covey. Brian's a, an industry leader um, with uh, at a at a Nashville, Tennessee, and Brian and I were on a um, a mortgage coach webinar, right? Kind of like Dave Savage over at Mortgage Coach likes to go live. 
we do it live, then he records it and he puts it up on his YouTube channel. And we did this more for like leaders, right? This was more for like branch managers, area managers, divisional president, sales leaders in the mortgage industry. But something came up in that conversation that I was like, oh, I had a big aha moment. And it was cool how it came about because it was a organic conversation. And Dave was asking Brian and I, we each lead large sales teams in the mortgage industry. What do you think is the number one like matrix or matrix that we should be grading our originators on? Is it who pulled the most uh, credit applications? Is it who generated the most leads? Is it who funded the most loans? Is it who funded the most volume? And we were debating back and forth and Dave just kind of piped in and said, you know what I think the mortgage industry should be doing based on my data and my research? Who converts at the highest percentage? I was like, huh. Now, one could argue, well, if John converts 50% of his leads but only gets six leads a month. I'm crushing it. You're only doing three loans a month. You are an average producer. Right. Okay. But what Dave said, he goes, if you study the people who convert leads at the highest percentage, they are also the highest producers because the skill sets that end up being developed, the habits that are formed when you focus on lead conversion it also allows you to generate the most leads, which then allows you to close the most loans, which allows you to have the most units, which allows you to have the most credit pools, which allows you to have the most volume. He said, so start with lead generating. Uh, grade and hold accountable your sales teams to those that, that, that lead convert. Did I, did I say lead generate? I meant lead convert. Uh, make everything about lead conversion, everything else will take care of itself. I was like, huh. So I started thinking more about it, thinking more about it. And here we are a month later. I'm like, let's do a whole entire episode on just that. So we're going to title this something along the lines of like, dominate your game, earn more money strictly by focusing on lead conversion, not lead generation, lead conversion. Mm -hmm. And then I came up with my five steps for what mortgage loan originators can do in order to increase their lead conversion. Okay. And that's what we're going to talk about. Let's go. You ready to go? Mm -hmm. Number one, mm -hmm. it starts with the referral. And if you want to convert leads at a higher percentage, you have to make sure you're being referred the right way. Cause if you're not referred the right way, that's like getting a bad pass and expecting to make the alley-oop. You're not. That's like getting a bad pitch and being expected to hit a home run. Like, no, if it's home run derby, I need you to lay it right across the table. That way I can knock it out of the park, right? If we're doing football, if we're playing basketball and this is Penny to Shaq, Penny, I need to have a really good pass so that I can jump up in the air and slam it down. By the way, I'm dating myself when I say Penny to Shaq. Yeah. Can you use me any point guard? Um, you don't even know Rick and Morty, man. You got, you got along. Um, I mean, Steph to who? Steph to Clay Thompson? But Clay Thompson also shoots from the perimeter. He doesn't really. The Golden State, it. You're, you're out of it because the Golden State Warriors are bums now. All right. Well, there we go. <laughs> Look, if Mark was here, he would help me out, John. Uh, you're no use. Uh, but I think the audience is picking up what I'm putting down. Yeah. So, step number one is you have to make sure you're being referred better. Well, like, what do you mean referred better? Like, how can I be, like, if I'm not in that person's brain, how do I. So referred better is working with our referral sources and teaching them how we like to be referred. Making sure you're referred better is getting rid of those referral sources that don't refer you well, or getting rid of those referral sources that refer you bad leads and replacing them with referral sources who, who do refer you good leads or do refer you the right way. Mm -hmm. Cause I just did, you and I just recorded a, uh, a training video that we're going to have hosted on TLAP online next month. And I covered this on one of my live sales trainings with the TLAP community, where I did a whole entire section or segment on good, bad, and ugly leads. Cause as loan officers, there's such a thing. A good lead means you're referred the right way. And the person is going to be eligible for financing. Like they're going to qualify a bad lead. You are referred the right way, but this person's probably BTR. They're born to rent. And then the ugly leads, 
They may be 800 credit score. They may have a million dollars in the bank. Maybe they may make a million dollars a year, W-2, been on the same job for 20 years. They have a 10% debt to income ratio and a 50% LTV. But they weren't referred to you the right way. Being referred the right way for me is I want someone to say, hey, John, you have to call Dustin. You have to call Dustin because I trust him emphatically to do the best job for you. He's the person that is going to advocate for you to make sure your offer gets accepted. He's going to be the person accountable to us to make sure that you close on time. You have all of your questions answered and he and his team are going to be accessible to you. Dustin and his team make sure you get the right loan and that you qualify. That's why I recommend solely Dustin, right? That's I was referred the right way. So when I'm looking at increasing my lead conversion, it starts with how am I being referred? And I can intentionally work with my referral sources to coach them up on how I like to be referred. I can also get rid of or eliminate referral sources that don't refer me the right way or only refer me bad leads and then use some of my prospecting activities to go out and find replacement referral sources who are going to refer me the right way. Okay, so that's that would be step number one. Step number two, y'all, if you are looking to increase your conversion ratio, which by the way, why are we increasing our conversion ratio? Because it's been proven that those that focus on increasing the conversion ratio will also be those that generate the most leads, close the most loans, make the most money, okay? You gotta show up online. You just have to. In today's day and age, you have to show up online. Not showing up online is literally like someone back in 2002 telling you to get email and you're saying, no, I'll use a fax machine. Like that's how my, the mortgage company I work for, it's how we were actually founded, right? Eric, who founded the company, his mentor was this guy by the name of Julius. Eric still loves technology. He's a tech guy. Eric was telling Julius, his mentor, Julius, we got to get computers with email. We need to get a server. We need to have email. And Julius is like, nope, fax machine. Eric didn't want to go start his own mortgage company, but Eric wanted to work for a mortgage company that embraced technology. Right. Well, Eric's been very successful in this industry, all because Julius, as the story was told to me, wouldn't get a fax what machine. Julius Caesar, how old are we going back? I have no idea. That was a this good is, joke. This... Julius Caesar, did you not get it? Boom, boom, shh. I did get it, John. I did get it. I just powered right That's through. That's how your jokes are hitting And today. you're trying to put me on Adderall. Look at that. You're trying to put me on Adderall. Can you imagine what I would have done? You would accomplish, talk, you, you would find 10 more hours in the day if you were on Adderall. <laughs> okay. We're not, we're not even going there. You have a better likelihood of getting me to eat mushrooms with you. Okay. We'll than, start there. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Sold. Sold. I will start sold. <laughs> All right. So, but showing up online mm -hmm. in 2024, okay, you just got to do it. Right. That is everything from... You know, do you show up on Zillow to where you have a presence with reviews? Do you have a Google review page? Like, are you on Facebook? Do you have an Instagram account? Are you on LinkedIn? Are you posting? Do you have a photo? Do you have um, post? Do you have your contact information? At the end of the day, ultimately people will want to do business with people, especially like the next generation, the Gen Z's. They 100% are going to want your advice. They're 100% going to want to talk to you on the phone, maybe even meet you in person or do a Zoom with you. But that's after they've already stalked you online. If you're not showing up online, you don't exist. You don't even know the leads you're missing because so and so told that 28 year old, newly married, MBA uh, graduate who just got promoted and maybe going to start a family in three years to call you, but when they researched you, they couldn't find you on LinkedIn. They couldn't find you on Instagram. They couldn't find you on Facebook. You didn't have a Zillow uh, page and you didn't have any Google reviews. So you just got to show up online. And by the way, Julius Caesar, Rome wasn't built overnight. So you start somewhere and you build upon it. It's just a matter of taking intentionality and then adding some consistency with that intentionality. Step number three, Y'all got to be a better presenter. You have to stand out. If you come across like every other schmo, Tom, Dick, or Harry, Sally, Brenda, or Mary. Karen, too. Throw Karen, too. Throw a Karen in there. Gotta throw a Karen gotta in throw there. Karen. I feel bad for anyone whose name is Karen. I feel, why would you name anybody Karen at like moving forward? That You can't. You don't. 
I you think can't. that name is going to be like eliminated. Like when 20, like 40 hits, there's going to be nobody named Karen. Probably not. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe some people um, that aren't into pop culture. Right. Some people who maybe said, I'm not getting on social media because right. it's 2024. Shout out to the Karen that's actually sitting next to us in the office next to us, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, that is really is Karen. Her name. Yeah, her name is Karen. Karen. Yeah. Um, but no, become better presenters. That is everything from what is your client experience like? Let's start with how are they scheduling with you? Do you, are you using Calendly? Like just having a simple app that allows someone to click a link, look at your calendar, look at their schedule and get something booked on their own. That sets a professional standard. Are you just pushing them to your website after maybe you the lead and the realtor texted back and forth three times? Or are you getting them on a 20 minute Zoom call with you that you can record and send them afterwards as a follow-up where you're calling it a home buyer consultation. You're asking them the right questions, everything from what's your comfort monthly payment or what's most important to you in this transaction? What's your timeline? When you sit down and do your monthly budget, what is it that you are trying to keep your total monthly payment around? How much money do you have allocated to go towards this transaction? Like, are you coming across as a financial expert, as someone who cares about their overall well being when it comes to all matters personal finance? Or are you trying to just be an order taker who pulls credit, who pushes out pre approval letters and tries to negotiate interest rates? Right? So, step three, if you're trying to become the best with lead conversion, comes down to your presentation. Are you using Mortgage Coach? Do you get leverage video technology, whether it's Zoom, like I mentioned, or even COVID or BombBomb? Like those are all things that top tier professionals are doing in order to separate themselves so that they have an opportunity to build trust. And you want that conversation that they had with you, that experience they had with you to look different than if they went to their credit union or they called that 1-800 number that they saw on TV and talked to that call center loan officer. So these are things that you should be doing. Then number four, we are talking about lead conversion, right, John? Mm -hmm. Lead conversion, what do you do to actually follow up? Like, think about that, you're in sales. You spend a lot of time, sometimes a lot of money, definitely a lot of energy to generate leads. What do you do to actually follow up? Do you have a system? If you don't, that's probably step number one, right? Things that you could do pretty quickly, you could put together a system that allows you to follow up with your leads better than you ever have. And that could be free, right? You could follow our 31 day prospect follow-up system, which is a paper system that would cost you less than probably $30 to put together. And automatically your lead conversion would increase. Just like you could work on your presentation and all of a sudden your lead conversion would increase without taking a whole lot of time, effort, or money. But on top of having a system, do you have a CRM? Like I love CRMs for so many reasons. One, the automation aspect. Two, I love having the data housed somewhere so I can easily look it up. But then eventually like I need a place to keep notes and if I have a really good CRM and I'm a good CRM user, as I become a dominant person with lead generation, I won't be able to remember all of the leads, but the CRM has my notes and I can tell the CRM when to remind me to call that person next again. And when I come to the office, it takes all the thinking out of it. It just pops up and says, these are the eight people that you're calling. Here are the notes from your last call. And then I can mm -hmm. from their call. And probably the three CRMs that I would tell someone to look at, it's like, look, if you want something that's out of the box, ready to go, you're just getting started and you are very much a solo operator, check out our friends over at Adium, A-I-D-I-U-M, check out Adium. If you're really big into like technology and AI, I'd also tell you to check out what they're doing over at Third Floor. Third Floor is an up and coming CRM but doing some really cool stuff when it comes to technology and they are more out of the box as well. But if you're a super user of CRMs and you're like, I am dialed in and I freaking love Salesforce and I know Salesforce inside and out and I have a team and we're going to scale this thing and we're going to be masters. Like I'll tell you, I use Jungo. 
I used Jungo, but it was the third CRM after 15 years of being CRM users. We have a CRM administrator who is a super user and collectively we are able to jump into Jungo, but Jungo is a very heavy lift. Salesforce is a very heavy lift. Talk to anyone who loves CRMs. People love themselves from Salesforce, but you got to understand it's a heavy lift. But when I'm looking at lead conversion and I'm looking at those who do it the best, the top producers, the mortgage millionaires, they all have a CRM. It honestly doesn't matter which one. It matters that you have one and you use it, but you have one and you use it because that's the best CRM, right? The best CRM is the one that you use. We coach that and we teach that. But uh, you can check out ADM, Third Floor, and Jungo, but that would be step number four. And then step number five, you want to take a guess? Because think about this, John. We've talked about being referred better. Mm -hmm. We've talked about showing up online better. Mm -hmm. We've talked about being a better presenter up front. Like, what is that? initial consultation sound like, look like, feel like. Mm -hmm. We talked about actually doing lead follow-up, actually having systems in place. Like what, what I love about my CRM, it can send a text message, an email, and sometimes even a voicemail without me having to do anything, all based on how I program the CRM. So it's working for me behind the scenes in case I get too busy or I forget. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever going to, I think, replace my intentionality of picking up the phone and calling a lead to check in on them, right. right? Sending them a video message and texting it over. But if I get too busy or I'm not able to do that as frequently as I want to, a good CRM with automation could do that for me. But once we're doing that, there's one thing left in the sales process. Or ignore the shit out of potential leads and clients until they buy or die. That's step number four. Oh, That was step number four. That's having a system or a process <laughs> That allows you yeah. to intentionally, yeah, relentlessly pursue all leads until they buy, die, or get a restraining order. Right. Yep. No. Close strong. So, Are you a strong closer? What? Well, look, you you got referred the right way. Mm -hmm. Cool. That person stalked you. They kind of fact-checked the mm -hmm. referral source. Mm -hmm. You showed up online. They're like, okay, this isn't a creepy weirdo. Mm -hmm. Looks like this person knows what they're doing. They have experience. I've read some of their reviews. I'll go ahead and give them a call. They called you. You knocked it out of the park with the professionalism and the presentation, right? You had a Calendly link. You let them pick the time. You did a Zoom meeting with them. You did a true consultation. You then sent them that recording. Hey, if you want to share this with your spouse tonight, you even told them that you would utilize mortgage coach. You put together some kind of a um, presentation for them that walks them through the finance, the financial side of purchasing a home and how they're going to build wealth through, through real estate. You then relentlessly pursued them. Now they're under contract. You got to close strong. And in order to close strong, you have to study sales scripts. You have to study what it means to actually close. And what I would tell you, when you go to close someone, it's reiterating everything that you've been doing over the past 30, 60, 90, or even 100 days in the sales cycle. You're reminding them, hey, do you remember, John, the first time we chatted? The first time we chatted, you were referred to me by Angie over at Remax. And do you remember why Angie referred you to me? You're like, uh, because I'm the person that's going to get to the finish line. Congratulations, you're under contract. I'm excited to make sure that I get you to the finish line. And then John, remember when we first chatted, right? We did that consultation. You told me X, Y, and Z. And you said that Z was your biggest concern. I want to let you know that I've already solved for Z and we're going to make sure that that concern is no longer your concern. And John, remember when, when, when I sent you that total cost analysis, I'm going to update that for you. I'm gonna give you three examples. Three examples for you to pick from, or three, not examples, three options. I'm going to give you three options, John. Again, like I told you when I first met you, it doesn't matter to me which option you choose because I'm not going to get paid any different based on those options. What matters to me is that you feel that that's the best option for you, that you sleep good at night, and that I can become your lender for life. And most importantly, that I do such a great job, you're going to refer me all your friends, family, and neighbors. So here's what I'm going to do. Now that you're under contract, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to price out some, some scenarios for you. I'm going to figure out what works best for you and your goals. I'm going to send you those three options. Once you receive those options, you and I are going to hop on another call. We can use my calendar link so you can schedule that call with me. 
It's only going to be 15 minutes. I'm going to answer any questions you have regarding options A, B, or C. Once you choose that option, I'm going to get you locked in. I'm going to get you over to my processor so that she can make sure we get you closed on time. And I'm going to make one more promise for you, John, during this process. Myself or someone from my team will be reaching out to you every single week to give you an update on how everything is going and also to get some feedback from you to make sure that we are meeting all your expectations, right? That is something that a closer would say. That is, that is a type of dialogue a closer would have with their client so that all of the work that you did up front is gonna allow you to take that lead and convert it into a sale. Hence, step five of what to do in order to increase your lead conversion. And if you just focus on those five things, I promise everything else will fall in the suit, right? Your realtors will start loving you because you're dominating lead follow-up. And because you're dominating lead follow-up, you're helping them convert more, more leads into transactions. Now they're going to want to refer you more and they're going to be more willing to refer you to other people in their office, right? Like it's a, it's a full spectrum of what you as a professional could and should be doing. So maybe, maybe we've been a little bit off the past five or 10 years focused solely on lead generating. Maybe if we focus on lead conversion, we would trust that lead generation would just follow suit. And I want to give, you know, thanks to Dave Savage for that. Like Dave was the inspiration of today's episode. And hopefully there's an originator or a realtor even who's tuning in like, damn, yeah, I could apply that. Right, like I could apply, if I'm a real estate agent, I could apply a lot of what was taught right right now mm -hmm. to, to my business. If I was a financial advisor, same exact thing. Right, if I sold life insurance, if I worked at Tom James selling clothes, you're getting my drift. If I'm in any type of sales role, if I just focused on what I need to do to increase my lead conversion, everything else should take care of itself. And I would find myself as being the most admired, the most respected, and the one of the top producers in my industry solely by focusing on increasing lead conversion. Well said, Dustin. You inspired me to get out there and crush it. Probably not, John, I but know, hopefully but, yeah. I, I inspired a few thousand people to look at what they're mm. currently doing and focusing on, look, you start with one or two always. Focus on one or two activities that you can lean into do consistently and grow in order to move the needle because we get as james clear teaches through atomic habits one percent better per day and as julius caesar taught you rome wasn't built overnight he also said i don't need that goddamn email just stick to the fax machine no well, that was not julius caesar yeah but that was a gentleman by the name of julius uh somewhere in the great state of wisconsin but John, do you have any party words for the people before we sign off for today? I do. Natural disasters, the biggest ones, are predictable by the position of the planets in respect to the sun. All right, look that up. Was that a Netflix special or was yeah, that I, a YouTube I'm video? Deep YouTube. I find this YouTube channel I talk about so good. All right. Well, <laughs> look, you are that much smarter because of that. John? I thank you. I love your Peanuts Athletic Shout Club. Shout out Snoopy. Yeah, I got Snoopy on the hoodie. Listen, y'all, his name is John Coleman. My name is Dustin Owen. You have just tuned in to an episode of the Loan Officer Podcast. If you're a first-time tuner enter, please know we're on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, or anywhere that you can find podcasts. Do us a favor. Go back and watch the previous 399 episodes and come at your boy. There you go. <laughs> Give us a five-star review. Give us a thumbs up, give us a follow, but give us a share, not just once, not twice, but to three people that you think would benefit from this type of content. If you're a mortgage loan originator, check us out over at tloponline.com. Sign up for our free newsletter, check out some of our TLOP exclusives and keep on tuning in. We're gonna have a great 2024 and we're gonna have a great 2024 because of you. Not you, John Coleman, but you. Thank you. The people who are tuning in yep. or watching us on YouTube. He's John Coleman. I'm Dustin Owen. That's all the time we have for you today, but we do look forward to catching you on the next episode. Peace.